Wow, what a turnout. Did not expect this one. Who wants one of these flying cars? Everyone, right? Hmm, does not appear to have an engine. Do you see any? Typically, in order for an aircraft to fly, it must make use of some sort of thrust generating engine. But, but this, this craft does, does not, not appear to make, make use of any engines. Strange. Very unusual. Dahara, please show our guest what she can do. Do the thing. Here we are, indoors. There are no exhaust fumes. No engine or electric motor. No Look closely. Do you see anything that resembles an engine? If we were to place a piece of tissue paper on one side of the craft, you'll see that there exists a fast current of air. It's a downdraft that follows and even tucks under the craft. Ah, this is a clue. When the craft flies over dirt or grass, there's a swirling effect. This is another clue. The lines running down the sides of the craft are yet another clue. Any ideas of what's keeping this craft aloft? Any ideas how it's able to fly? Still, any, any ideas? ideas? I was there watching the Apollo 11 launch. You should have seen me. I was beside myself with excitement, asking, Wow, what's next? Mars? Space travel? Flying cars? It seemed that the sky was no longer a limit. But as the years passed, my excitement turned to disappointment. There was no desire to return to the moon or to explore space with a crewed spacecraft. Since then, there has been no additional space travel. Great sadness. We went to the moon over 50 years ago. What happened? Why did it all come to a stop? Here now, roughly 50 years later, a foreigner from South Africa, Elon Musk, took up space travel in order to be able to reach Mars. Elon single-handedly returned manned or crewed space travel. Okay, it's time to disclose. It's time to reveal to you what has been an open secret for many years. But before we do, ask yourself, are you actually ready for the truth? And sometimes I wonder if you can handle it. Before we divulge its method of locomotion, note, no matter what you might think, this is not anti-gravity. True or real anti-gravity requires one massive amount of both positive and negative energies. Most of the <coughs> flying craft you might see in the sky 
flies by the same basic means as does this craft fly. Which raises the question, how? How does it fly? Well, the fact that you do not see any engines means only one thing. The entire craft is the engine. That is to say, the entire whole of the craft serves as one large lifting surface. Sort of like a flying wing. Getting to the nitty gritty of it, the lines you see running down the sides of the craft are electrical conductors, but this is only one aspect of the entire propulsion system. Inside the craft are located coils, additional electrodes, and high frequency, high voltage discharge units that have been specifically engineered to function in unison in order to thoroughly ionize the surrounding air. Why is this necessary, you might ask? Just for the fun of listening to pops and cracks and the smell of ozone. Now, kidding, joking aside, seriously, joking aside. The reason why we ionize the air first is due to the fact that electrically neutral air can only be grabbed onto and moved with ridiculous amounts of energy which is not at all efficient. Not to mention the huge energy producing machinery needed to produce that much meltdown amounts of energy which would make the craft unreasonably impractically large and heavy. Too heavy in fact to fly. But if we thoroughly ionize the air first using these specifically engineered machines, they're able to emit copious amounts of pulsed condition electromagnetic energies. Each one of these fields is able to grab onto and move these ions. Once these ions have been accelerated, each accelerated ion then collides, bumps into the surrounding unionized air, thus imparting momentum to the unionized air, thus accelerating the unionized air down and around the craft, generating lift. In a similar way as does a propeller force air over the wings of an aircraft. In this way, on command, we're able to move the air where and when it is needed to be moved and do so rapidly. And since the air is now properly accelerated around and down the sides of the craft, this process generates a lift in a similar fashion as does air moving over a Coanda flying saucer or wing generate lift. If then we build into this superb flying machine, Amanda, great efficiencies beforehand, the craft becomes feasible for even everyday use. By adjusting where the ionization takes place around different segments of the coils and electrodes and discharge units, the craft is able to move in any direction, up, down, left, right, and even backwards. And as you can see, by simultaneously thrusting rearward and down, the craft will lift, hover, and move forward. By thrusting forward, the craft is able to slow and even come to a full stop. A little more forward thrust and the craft moves backwards. Now, I'm sure that everybody wants to know what powers it, right? Of course you do. The same basic technology that powers other craft, compact annihilation reactors. But hey, that's for another video. I hope you enjoyed watching this rather shorter video. I thank you for watching. As always, keep wandering about space. Thank you.